Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm going to be talking about dieseling and to help me do that I'm equipped with the two B2s that I used in the second episode of the Air Armoury on the B2 air rifle. I'll start by saying I filmed this video about two different times. I did the first half a few months ago and I'm doing the rest today. Now the reason for that is the idea to do a video on dieseling was an impromptu one I had when I borrowed the other B2 air rifle for when I was making that video and I only had limited time with that gun so I had to film the bits I needed for that then and there and I've only just got around to finishing the rest of it. So that explains why some things may look a bit different and it also explains why I seem to keep changing clothes. Uh, in this video I'll talk about dieseling, what it is, how it's caused, I'll show you what it looks like, go over the advantages and disadvantages, and then I'll talk a bit about how to prevent and how to cure it. So dieseling, what is it? Dieseling is when the oil, lubrication or grease or whatever in the compression chamber of spring air guns combusts due to the very high temperature caused due to the rapid compression of air when the spring and the piston are released and it's called dieseling in reference to how a diesel engine works whereby ignition is caused by fuel compression rather than by a spark. Uh, dieseling is usually caused when too much or the wrong type of lubricant is used on any of the parts in a compression chamber. Um, you should never use anything petroleum based, you should always use something silicon based but there are a number of good products on the market which you can use. I personally have got Abbey SM50 Gun Lube and that clearly states on the label using compression chambers, high load metal to metal areas and high temperatures. That's what I use. Um, alternatively though you can deliberately cause dieseling by putting a small amount of oil in the uh, skirt of the pellet or directly into the compression chamber through the transfer port and I'll talk about why you might want to do that later on. Um, how to identify a dieseling gun. You can see it dieseling by sound, sight and smell. It will sound a lot louder, almost like a 2-2 rimfire rifle. Um, you often get a noticeable blast of smoke from the muzzle when you fire it, and it has a very distinctive smell, which obviously you're not going to pick up on the video, which is a shame because it's really quite a nice smell. As I said in my video of the B2, it's a gun that diesels an awful lot when new. Now my rifle here has been stripped down and re-greased, re-lubricated properly whereas this rifle that I've borrowed has only been fired a handful of times and is therefore as new. So I'll be using that to show you the difference between them and to do that I'll be using Milbro Caledonian pellets which are an average of 13.4 grains. There you've seen a dieseling and non-dieseling rifle and I've also taken stills from those clips at the moment of firing for comparison which you can see here. Now moving on to look at the advantages and disadvantages of dieseling. Now there are a number of each but this isn't a case of weighing them up to decide whether you should make your gun diesel or not because the fact is dieseling is not a good thing and should be avoided. The main advantage is that the combustion will increase the velocity of the pellet and will make it more powerful and there is even some evidence to suggest that it may even make it more accurate as the combustion will push the pellet out of the barrel quicker and therefore earlier in the firing cycle which means there's less time for it to be affected by the movement of the recoil and although not strictly related to the performance of the gun a dieseling gun does look and sound pretty good. So whilst there are some benefits to dieseling there are considerably more drawbacks. Air guns just aren't designed to take explosions like firearms, so dieseling can and usually will cause some damage to your gun. The most common problems being damaged or blown seals, and it can also damage or even break the spring. 
Now, although I've said that dieseling can, in theory, increase accuracy, in reality, it's often going to actually have an adverse effect as the power varies from shot to shot. Now, as the lubricant combusts, it is used up. So therefore, if a gun diesels over time, it may actually create an unlubricated gun, which can cause other problems, including wear on the internal parts, and could even lead to the gun seizing up. Now, as you've seen from the demonstration, one of the byproducts of dieseling is smoke, but there are others, and dieseling causes a sooty residue to build up in the compression chamber, which then mixes with the remaining lubricant and can cause a much thicker substance, which then clogs up the piston head and the transfer port. Now another big downside is that with the increased power and the varying power from shot to shot you don't know how powerful the gun is, which is dangerous enough in itself but can also cause your gun to go above 12 foot-pounds which would make it illegal in the UK without a firearm certificate. You can find out more about that on the Air Armoury video on air gun law. If your gun is dieseling, hopefully this video will have explained why. And to stop it, the simplest thing to do is to strip down, clean and re-lubricate it using a small amount of silicon oil. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that now, although I do intend to do a video in the future on stripping down a spring gun, so keep an eye out for that. Just bear in mind that even an uncocked gun still has an enormous amount of pressure in the spring and can cause serious injury, so if you're at all unsure how to do this, don't. Take it to a local gunsmith to do it for you. Hopefully you found the video informative, and just remember that although it does have some advantages, and no matter how cool a diesel gun looks and sounds, it's bad. Until next time, keep your arms in the air.